Hello and welcome to Mission Innovation. Today we are going to discuss some topics which are neuromorphic computing and why it is used and why it is important in hardware implementation and what are crossbar arrays. So let's start. So first of all what do you mean by the term neuromorphic computing? So by neuromorphic computing we means that it is brain like computing so as in conventional cpu systems we have what we have is one human architecture so in that we have separate space for memory and processor so what is the issue with this that we need a lot of energy and time to transfer data from memory to the processor and vice versa so for for eliminating these issues what the researchers have proposed is some new architecture so this is called as neuromorphic or what we called it as in memory computation in memory computing fine so that is that is what we say is uh, the memory itself is capable of computing this means we don't need a separate processor we mean to say that processing inside the memory itself so now let's see why this is important why is this an important topic so so let's say we have to implement a neural network we have a let's say we have a machine learning task we are running machine learning task and we need to implement it on hardware so what we use is generally a neural network so what is a neural network so in neural network what we see is something or structure like this like there are neurons these are the neurons and then put layer then we have another neurons and these are all connected to the to each other via synapses these are all connected to each other via synapses fine it is all fully connected something like this so these are the neurons and and these are the synapses fine so basically there are two units that is neurons and synapses so when we implement this on an actual hardware what we do is we get a crossbar we need a crossbar architecture understand so so let me show you how a typical crossbar architecture looks like so a crossbar architecture is basically a arrayed structure it is a arrayed structure that is as we see simply let me draw it so now we are focusing on the cross bar that is architecture so we have a set of rows and columns okay and what we have is we have memory the memory device we have memory devices connected between them like this everywhere that is connected to both row and column similarly like this 
everywhere. At every junction, at every junction, we have a memory device. So let's look in detail what is this thing represents. So let's let's say we have a we have a memory device. We have a memory device which is represented by a resistive memory. Resistive memory device. What is a resistive memory device? Basically, these are termed as memristors. Memristors. So it can either be like uh, R on and R off. There are basically two states. Either the device will be on or it will be off. So when it will be on, it will be the low resistance and it will be off and it will be high resistance. Now for, for every such resistive device, we have an excess transistor also. This is called as excess transistor. Fine. So this is completely known as a 1P, 1R configuration. That is the short form for one transistor and one resistance, one resistor. This is the basically 1T, 1R configuration and this 1T, 1R configuration is nothing but this. Fine. So, so now let's again just, uh, I am just briefing it. What is this whole concept? So, so the first point is like we have one human architecture, we have one human architecture, it has, it has the drawbacks, it has drawbacks uh, such that the memory and processor are separate, so we need a lot of energy and time, so this is solved by in-memory computing, that is in-memory computing. Fine. And this is what is what it is then is what at hardware level it is called as neuromorphic architecture. Neuromorphic architecture. So so basically if you see if you have any neural network, if you have any neural network, let's say let me let, let us say that we have any task. These are the neurons. These are the synapses. And you have trained them in software using Python, MATLAB, whatever tool you want. You have trained it. And now you want to implement it on hardware. So on hardware what we have is have us something like this. So we have black boxes like this. And now these are, are connected like this. So, what is this basically? This is basically 1P, 1R, a memristor device 
and its existence is there. Now, now what is this cross bars? So let's see, let's see these vertical lines, these vertical lines, these are all called word lines. Word lines. And these are called the horizontal lines, these are called bit lines. So these bit lines, that is BL and WL, these are termed as activating lines, activation lines, activation of this call bar array. So what we do is basically now let's let's focus on how this cross bar actually works. Fine. So let's focus on how this cross bar actually works. So what we do is we provide input input at the rows in the form of current or voltage pulse. Then we provide then we provide a columns using some suitable voltage pulse. So actually what happens now? See. Let's say let's say you have provided some voltage or current pulse here and you have provided some voltage pulse here. Let's say this is activated, this is not activated, this is activated. Fine. So now when, when it is activated, this cell, this cell is active, this cell is active. So this cell is active, that means it has some resistance associated with it. So it will allow some current, let's say I1, activate, I1 flowing through it. Similarly, this is also activated, so let's say I2 current is activated. Then similarly this I3. So what you get at the output, output gives summation of all currents, fine, right? summation of all currents. And as you must be knowing that in the neural network, what we get is, what we get is, y is a, y is equals to summation of w y x i plus some bias. So what is this? This is the weighted sum weighted sum fine similarly what you are getting is let's say we are giving this vi vi input so applying kca here bracket of rules what we get is you know v equals to ir at the basic ohm's law so what we get is vi equals to v upon r or it is called g into r g is the Conductance of the conductance of the memory strip device. Fine. Is it clear now? Memory strip device. Fine. And this conductance is nothing but it is equivalent to the weights. This weight and this WY, these are same. This xi is equivalent to this input voltage, this input voltage and bias is something we actually have additional control circuit. So this is how a basically a cross bar works. So thank you for so thank you everyone and stay connected. Hope we will uh, discuss some more topics related to it. Thank you and all the best to everyone.